The detailed description of RC firing circuit will be demonstrated properly in this lecture session. Actually, based on the application for different converter circuits, the RC firing circuit can be two types. Number one, RC halfway firing circuit and number two, RC full way firing circuit. At first, I am going to demonstrate the topic on RC halfway firing circuit. In my previous lecture session, I have described the topic on R firing circuit or resistive firing circuit. In case of resistive firing circuit, we found that the conduction angle alpha can be changed between a particular range 0 degree to 90 degree, not more than that. So that is actually the limitation for using R firing circuit or resistive firing circuit. That can be overcome by using this kind of circuit which is called RC half wave or full wave triggering circuit in which we can change the firing angle within a wide range of 0 degree to 180 degree. So we can conclude that the limited range of firing angle controlled by resistive firing circuit can be overcome by using RC firing circuit. In this circuit, resistance R and the capacitor C determine the point 0 degree to 180 degree anywhere in the supply voltage cycle where the ACR can be switched on. Now consider, this is a simple circuit has given that is for RC half wave triggering circuit which is constructed by a variable resistance R, two diodes D1 and D2, one ACR that is T and a capacitor that is C. A load is connected over here directly to the supply. Okay, And assume the supply voltage is an AC signal that is defined by Vs equal to Vm sin omega t and the terminal voltage across the load suppose V0 and the voltage across the switch that is defined by Vt. And diode D1 and D2, D1 is actually used to protect the reverse biasing current which starts flowing during reverse biasing condition from anode to gate and the D1 is used to protect the current when the capacitor starts discharging and the capacitor current try to flow in opposite direction. And most important part that is this variable resistance R which is normally used to give the proper shape of the output voltage and which, have, and which can be varied between 0 to 180 degree anywhere. And one more thing that is keeping your mind, for this particular circuit diagram, we are connected the capacitor in such a way where the lower plate is positive. Now, to demonstrate the working principle of this circuit, let me consider the total operation should be conducted from negative cycle. That is why we can draw or define the output voltage waveforms across the all voltage and it has started from negative polarity or negative cycle. Okay. So first consider the negative cycle starts. That means in the circuit diagram, the lower part will be more positive with respect to the upper one. That means then the current try to flow in this direction and as per the Connection of the capacitor as the lower plate is positive, that means the capacitor starts storing energy inside it and it can store the voltage to a maximum value up to minus Vm. Okay? And that is why I have taken this point that is the maximum stored energy across the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor that is minus Vm. Then what happened? That means as per the normal nature of the sine wave, at the point of minus pi by 2, after that the voltage is gradually decreases when it will reach suppose 0 degree. That means in this particular case, the current is starts flowing easily from capacitor to D2 diode in this way. So we can say this part is actually when the capacitor starts storing energy inside it and the current starts flowing from capacitor to D2 as the D2 is under forward biasing condition. So the capacitor is fully charged at the point of minus pi by 2 and the stored voltage across the capacitor that, that is the peak value of the supply 
that can be defined by minus Vm. Okay. As we all know, when the capacitor is fully charged, then the capacitor try to discharge. And the charging current during charging state and discharging current during discharging state both are is just in opposite direction. That means we can say during charging condition then the charging current was flowing in this direction, right? When the capacitor is fully charged to a peak value of minus Vn, then the capacitor try to discharge, okay? Then the capacitor current that should be starts flowing across this direction. But in this case, then the diode that is in reverse biasing condition, then the diode stops conducting. That is why the current cannot be entered to diode to capacitor. That means the discharging current of the capacitor that should be flowing to the resistance, this variable resistance R. And the capacitor starts discharging across this variable resistance R. At the same time, the as the normal nature of the sine wave, the supply voltage starts falling from its maximum peak minus Vm to a certain value towards the zero. Means whenever we are changing the we are changing the position from minus pi by two to zero, the normal v on basis on the normal behavior of the sine wave then the maximum value min the maximum value which was arised that is minus vm at the point pi by 2 now it is in decreasing in order okay that is reflected on the waveform also see that means when we are in when we are in progressive nature from minus pi by 2 0 degree then as per the normal behavior of the sine wave the magnitude starts falling from its maximum peak minus Vm to this one. That is why at the same time when the capacitor starts discharging across the resistance R, that means this, the, this dotted line defines the capacitor discharging path. And when this negative cycle ended over this particular point 0 and once the positive cycle starts, that means what? That means when the positive cycle starts, then it will be positive and it will be negative, right? Then what happened? Then the supply current try to flow from this direction. At the same time, once the capacitor has stored the few amount of negative charges inside it, then due to presence of that amount of charges, the capacitor try to discharge in this path also. That means we can say, if we consider the particular diode D2, that means this upper part is more positive with respect to cathode. On the other hand, we can say the lower part is more negative with respect to cathode. Okay, that means what? We can say this is a lower part of this particular means diode D2 that is actually defined by the voltage across the capacitor that has actually already stored and the value is minus Vm. That means we can consider this a lower part of the diode D2 that is minus Vm at the same time once after passing the end position of the negative half cycle means that is after passing the zero once this part is get positive upper one and the negative one is negative that means current try to flow in this direction that means we can say if we are, we are considered the biasing magnitude that means the lower part is more negative with respect to upper one as this is defined by the supply voltage with a very small in magnitude and this is actually defined by the stored voltage across the capacitor C that is minus Vm. That means we can say just whenever we are crossing 0 to other angle that means the diode should be in reverse biasing condition as the lower part is more positive with respect to cathode. Okay, That is why the total capacitor current that should be flowing across the resistance. And as well as, as the supply current starts flowing, as this is in forward biasing condition, sorry, for the positive half cycle, what happened? Then, this current try to flow in this way, as well as this path also, as it is under switched off condition, that is why total current try to flow in this direction, as well as the current is flowing to the gate. But, the total current is not can be flowed to the day gate terminal as they stored a few amount of negative charges that was accumulated during the previous negative half cycle. That means, when the positive current starts flowing to the circuit, first it should be neutralize the all negative charges, then the current can be flow, can, can, can flow to the gate terminal. Okay. 
that is why we can explain in the diagram also so up to this point from minus pi by 2 0 then the capacitors discharging and this is the slope of the discharging current discharging current that is defined by the minus di dt so this is actually for the discharging voltage first it was maximum at the point of minus pi by 2 and it is the value the, the voltage stored across the capacitor that is defined by suppose OA that is very less magnitude with respect to previous one. So, this is a slope of the discharging voltage. Okay. What happened? See, when after crossing 0 as per a normal behavior of the sine wave, when the voltage is increasing gradually up to a particular point, that means then this current was flowing to the capacitor as well as the gate but the gate was not in conducting state because the capacitor still stored the few amount of charges due to the negative half cycle that is why this positive at, as the case of the positive half cycle first the capacitor voltage should be neutralized that is why it try to neutralize the capacitor voltage that is why then the capacitor will be discharged with a very sharp and with a very sharp line that is defined by this dotted line Previously, it was discharges in the normal way. So, this is it was the discharging slope. Now, it starts discharging with a sharply and that is defined by this dotted line. Okay. Unless until it is neutralized the total stored in, in negative ions. So, that is an, when all the negative charges are suppose that is diluted by the positive current which is delivered by the supply, then up to this point is considered then the then the supply current starts flowing to the gate terminal. That means when the total voltage stored across the capacitor is completely diluted by the application of the forward, forward cycle current, then once it is completely diluted, then the current can be flowed to the gate. Before that, it cannot flow to the gate. That means this discharging current of the capacitor that depends on this R, variable resistance R. That means if this R is very small in magnitude, then it will discharge very fastly. As well as if the R is set with a higher value, then the discharging current, then means total discharging time will be increased. That is why we can define this point in anywhere of this positive cycle. Maybe this point and this point and this point. That means the total discharging time is depends on the set value of R or the variable resistance of R. That means we can change the wide range of alpha or the uh, sorry alpha within a 0 to 180 degree. Suppose in this particular case we assume in this particular position the capacitor is fully discharged as well as the capacitor is charged to a particular value up to this point. Okay. When the voltage across the capacitor was 0, then it starts discharging with a very sharp line. Once it will take this position and that is delivered by the supply at this particular case, suppose we assume the capacitor have stored energy, this is the amount of the stored energy as well as the supply voltage is particular at this point. So, after this point, we can say the current is entering to the gate and the gate is fired. That means the the device is under switch on condition and device starts working. Okay, That means this firing angle alpha that can be controlled by the capacitance value as well as the variable resistance. Basically, the shape of the output voltage that will be defined by the variable resistance. How? See, we know once the switch is under working state or conducting state, then the load voltage is followed by the supply voltage. That is why when the switch when the gate is fired at the point of alpha then the then the device starts working then immediately the supply voltage which will be reflected from sorry the gate voltage which will be reflected from the supply voltage this is the position this is the shape or nature that is why we can say this is the output voltage which is appearing across load that means when the switch was not in conducting state, when the switch was remaining in off state, then the total voltage is appearing across the switch that is defined by the this one, right? That means we can say 0 degree to alpha, the switch was closed, then the voltage appearing across the switch that is defined by this one. That means the shape or the nature of the voltage that should be taken out from the supply voltage, this is the point. 
that is why it will be followed the that means the voltage across the terminal of the switch that should be this one right so this cycle again will be repeated for the similarly the cycle will be repeated for the next case next case onward again the capacitor starts discharging as well as the capacitor starts storing energy in the reverse cycle up to the maximum point of this one that is why 270 degree again the capacitor starts discharging for a particular point and due to presence of the forward biasing cycle that means the capacitor will be discharged sharply and which is defined by its dotted line that means the total phenomena can be repeated from the next cycle onward so in this way we can change the firing angle to the entire position of 0 to 180 degree just by adjusting the variable resistance and we can overcome the restriction or limitation of using resistive firing circuit now the question is what will be the maximum value of resistance by which we can design this rc halfway firing circuit so go to the previous slide this one so if we assume the voltage appearing across the capacitor is suppose vc and gate to cathode voltage suppose defined by vgt and voltage drop during conduction across the diode d1 that is suppose vd so we can write the voltage the capacitor voltage vc that should be equal to vgt plus vd so we can write the expression in this way that is vc equal to vg plus vgt plus i vd where voltage drop across the capacitor that is vd sorry the voltage drop across the diode d1 that is defined by vd so the current igt must be supplied from the voltage source through r and d1 then and uh, sorry and the gate to cathode circuit then we can rewrite the expression in this way that is vs must be greater than r into igt plus vc and after simplification we will get that is vs greater than equal to r into igt plus vgt plus vd in where we have taken this expression over here that is vc equal to igt plus vd that is I am VGT plus VD. So after simplification, we will get the result that is the actual designed value of R for the purpose of this particular circuit. That is R must be less than equal to VC minus VGT minus VD by I into GT. In where for application purpose, the range of the RC that should be greater than equal to 1.3 t by 2 that is nearly equal to 4 by omega where t is equal to 1 by f or the period of ac line frequency in second so this is all about for the rc half wave triggering circuit and we can easily conclude that we can change the entire firing angle from 0 to 180 degree anywhere that means the output voltage can be controlled properly by using this kind of firing circuit. Next, our topic is RC full wave triggering circuit, which will be reflected on the next slide, this one. So, this is the schematic circuit diagram of RC full wave triggering circuit, which is constructed by a bridge circuit. Okay, in the previous topic, we have discussed about the RC half wave triggering circuit that is why no question was bridge in this case as it is working for the full wave triggering circuit that is why both the cycle positive and negative that should be reflected on the load part in terms of positive cycle only that is why the bridge should be connected in this circuit okay that means the output voltage that should be twice of the so output power of the this kind of circuit that should be twice of the in output power of the only RC half wave triggering circuit. This is the benefit for using the bridge circuit. So how and this is the bridge is constructed here by the four diodes that is D1, D2, D3 and D4 and the variable resistance R is there to giving the proper shape of the output voltage and the capacitor is there and the capacitor is connected in this circuit in such a way 
is a normal that is the upper plate should be positive is a very important part in the previous discussion we have found that the lower plate towards positive okay this is a basic difference for the utilization of the capacitor for the proper circuit in which we are using the upper plate is positive okay and a uh, ac is there in which the gate is connected to the midpoint of the resistance and the capacitor okay fine and assume the supply voltage vs that is equal to vm sin omega t and the voltage across the terminal of anode to cathode or the voltage across the switch that is vt and the voltage appears across the load that is suppose v0 okay now now what happen in case of operation see when d1 and d2 starts conducting then the current starts flowing from d1 to the switch and load and coming back to d2 and the supply so in this way the current can conduct okay okay in case of next negative half cycle when the supply voltage is this one positive and this one negative then the diode d3 and d4 starts conducting and current try to flow supply to diode d3 then through the switch and load and coming back to the diode d4 in this way okay so see in the both cases the current direction is upper to lower across the sorry across the switch and across the load that is left hand side to right hand side in the first case the current was flowing in this direction and in this case when the d3 and d4 starts conducting then the current starts flowing from left hand side to right hand side and the previous case when the d1 and d2 was conducting and when the supply was this one is positive and this one is negative then the current starts flowing same in the left hand side to right hand side that means the output voltage that is in the both case means positive half cycle and the negative half cycle of the supply but the output voltage should be in the same direction both are in positive direction that is why we can say in case of the output voltage see both will be in positive direction that will be discussed later so the output voltage that is defined by both are in the positive direction yet we are using the a normal sinusoidal wave in case of the supply voltage okay that will be discussed later in details before that see let me erase the direction of the current so during positive half cycle when the current starts flowing from diode d1 to the switch as well as the capacitor at the first case when the switch was not in working state or on state then the current should flow through this circuit then the capacitor get charges when the capacitor gets charged with a higher value of the voltage that is near about suppose plus vm then the capacitor try to discharge and the normal behavior of the capacitor as we know the capacitor charging path and the capacitor discharging path both are not same as the capacitor was charged due to the switch on condition d1 and d2 in this way when the capacitor will be fully charged then the capacitor try to discharge once the capacitor try to discharge that means it will give some voltage across gate to cathode that means this capacitor voltage is able to provide the actual gate voltage as well as the discharging current of capacitor and somehow for the supply current that is actually trying to enter across the gate once the gate will reach the permissible amount of the voltage and current then is then the device will be in on state once the device starts working then the supply voltage will be followed by the load here okay that means this is a normal working principle so total phenomena that can be represented by the waveforms also see when the capacitor is fully charged up to the particular point of this one suppose which is defined by the suppose alpha and this alpha that should be adjusted by that should be adjusted by r that means in this particular case the capacitor charging that depends on this resistance r if we are trying to first charging of the capacitor to reduce the delay angle then it should be adjusted in low value on the other hand if we are trying to charge the capacitor with some delay with very slow process then we should adjust it this value in a high magnitude that is why by changing this variable resistance we can change the capacitor charging path sorry the capacitor charging time 
once the capacitor charging time is defined by this resistance R, that means which is actually connected to the gate part and which is defined by the gate voltage and the gate current, that means we can control the gate voltage and gate current both. As we can control the gate voltage and gate current, that means the triggering time that should be controlled by using this capacitor charging and discharging path, that means then we can control the total output voltage of the circuit. Okay, so go to the waveforms. So we can say, suppose the capacitor will get, capacitor starts storing energy and it has stored some voltage, suppose at this point, at the point of alpha, by using the proper position of the proper magnitude of the variable resistance R, then at this particular point, suppose the gate is fired, so, suppose, sorry, the thigh resistor is fired. Once the thigh resistor is fired, then immediately the output voltage that should be depends on the input voltage, that is why that is reflected over here. That means once the thigh resistor was not in firing condition or in working condition, then the total voltage, the total supply voltage that is defined by VC that was actually given over here, that is blocked by the switch itself. That is why once the switch is in working state, then the supply voltage will be reflected on the load. In this way, when the switch is in off state, then the supply voltage that should be reflected on the terminal across the switch that is defined by this one. Okay. Now, the one thing, just uh, what is the changes from these two axes that is defined by Vs and Vd. Vs is actually the supply voltage and VA, Vd that is the output voltage of the bridge. That is the output voltage of the bridge. Actually, sub, this supply voltage is periodic in nature as it is a sinusoidal wave, but this is actually pulsating DC. That is rectified output by using this bridge circuit. That is why there is a difference between two waveforms. This is actually the supply voltage and this is actually the voltage outcomes from the bridge circuit. And this is the output voltage waveforms and this is the waveforms of the voltage across the sorry across the switch. Okay, so we can change this firing angle anywhere between 0 to 180 degree by proper tuning or adjusting of the variable resistance through which we can control the total output voltage or the width of the output voltage which will be given over here, right? As well as the change of the stress, voltage stress across the switch. That means if we can change the output voltage, that means we can change the, in, we can change the regulated output, we can achieve the regulated output voltage for application purpose. That means we can change the entire range anywhere from 0 to 180 degree by using RC full wave rectifier as well as RC half wave rectifier for half wave rectifier operation and in this case we are using it for full wave rectification operation. Okay. Now, so we can conclude in this case the initial voltage from which capacitor C charges is almost zero. Capacitor C is set to the low positive voltage where the upper plate is positive by clamping action of SCR gate. When the capacitor charges to a voltage equal to VGT and SCR triggers and rectified voltage VD appears across the load that is defined by VO. That means if we consider the voltage across the capacitor that is actually delivering that that is actually responsible to voltage across the capacitor across the gate of the switch as well as when the forward cycle has started then the current starts flowing across the resistance to capacitor as well as across resistance to gate that means if we consider the current which is flowing through resistance to the gate that is suppose IGT and voltage appear across the capacitor suppose uh, we can assume that is suppose VG, uh, sorry, that is suppose VG and the supply voltage is Vs. Then we can write the expression in this way Vs that should be equal to voltage drop across the R if we consider the current is flowing through the R that is Ig2 that is multiplied by R that is the voltage drop across R as well as if we consider the voltage appears across the capacitor that is suppose Vc and which is actually nearly equal to the original gate voltage Vg, then we can say Vs that should be equal to Ig into R plus Vc. So we can 
write the expression in this way c that is v s that should be greater than equal to i g to r plus v c okay that means after simplification we can have as the v c reaches v g t for on state then v s must be greater than equal to i g t into r plus v g t after simplification we will get the design value of resistance r by which we can apply the appropriate gate pulse alpha that is defined by r that less than equal to vs minus vgt by igt and the range of the power frequency rc that must be greater than equal to the 50 into t by 2 that is 157 by omega that is the use that is actually used for application purpose so this is all about for the RC firing circuit in case of half wave and full wave both. So thank you.